share something that's very, very important, something that many people don't talk about because we're unaware of the topic, we're unaware of the devastation that is causing our community, and it's childhood brain cancer. So, thank you for joining us tonight, Nikki and Lou. Thank, thank you, you so us. much. And could you give us a little bit about, you know, a little bit more information or even enlighten everyone who does not, who's not aware of what DPIG is? Or is it, is it DPIG? DIPG. Okay. Okay. And if you can say the the correct word, word and yes. because I know for the most throughout the night we talk we're gonna be using an abbreviation, but actually mm -hmm. how do you pronounce it? It's diffuse and transit I'm sorry. No, I'm nervous. No, don't be nervous. <laughs> don't no, don't don't be good. Diffuse and transit Okay, all right. Okay, because I looked at it and I was like, I do not want to butcher this word. Right, right. <laughs> yes. And, and just for people who don't understand. Right? Yes. Right. It's the DRPG, they call it DRPG the monster. That's the monster of all cancer. It's a, basically, it's a childhood cancer. You know, you know it normally affects children between the ages of six, I believe, six to 12. But this can, the numbers are getting yeah, but some babies get it as early as some have got it as early as I want to say one baby got it as early as like six months old. And I've seen that as I was doing a little bit research, just you know, trying to get a little bit of understanding before coming on the show. Why does it hit just childhood? Like, why is it just in children and young children? Right. We don't. It, it's a, it, it's a childhood. It's a childhood cancer. It's something that affects children. We, I mean, we have no as far as that but it's, it's the monster for a reason because 90 percent kids after diagnosis is normally 9 to 12 months they, they pass away wow. and 97 percent within 18 months after diagnosis right. so it's, it's the monster that's the one you don't want and i guess that's the reason why doing this with the foundation is to get more research. Well, not not hours in particular. Yeah, not hours, but I mean, just as far as yeah. being a part of yeah. it yeah. and trying to get more research and why is it, why does it only occur in children? And is it something that can be, I don't, I don't know, like, prevent it? I don't know. You know how they say nowadays, you know, cancer is what we eat, it's what we drink, you know, we exercise and this and that. So it's like, even with the kids, it's like, okay, you are a young kid, so you're nearly not eating nearly what we eat. Right. You haven't even experienced things in life that we have the stress and just doing certain things. So it's like, where, where does it come from? Where does it come from? Right. It's like when, when we was, um, when the lady first got diagnosed and they was like, well, it's not nothing that, um, that you did. Mm -hmm. And it's not nothing that as far as the food, but in reality. Mm -hmm. What could happen? It's not like that with Manda, but that's what they it basically say. says the love of the drug. Right. The love of the drug. Right, right. That's what they say. So when you guys first found out about the Bayes, the Bayes, the diagnosis, first found out about his diagnosis, what year was that? 2013. And the Bayes How did you find out? It was a weekend. He was. He was always on opposite. I mean, he was energetic when he ran his little cousins and stuff. He was like the rough house. He was the rough house. So, right. you know, he was around his little cousin and they were at a park playing. He was with his godmommy and his aunt and they were playing. They were like this particular day he wasn't himself. You know, he was kind of laid back, chilling. And they, like, he wasn't himself. So then that Sunday, 
when I met a brother in my church, my aunt had told me that he was walking funny. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what you mean walking funny? They're like, I don't know. So I took him on the long way, and I told him to walk for me. And he was kind of walking, like, not leaning. You know, a little, little off. I'm looking at him like, this. I'm like, walk right. right. But I was like, he's been walking like this all morning. So then I know, well, maybe his electrolyte slow or, mm -hmm. or some of that nature could be wrong. So then I watched him walk a little bit. He kept walking like that. So that's when I took him to children's. The smaller children's, which used to be DC, the DC General, or whatever. Southeast. So whatever. I took him to the small children. Okay. And, uh, you know, they, they checked every lot of, lot, of, lot of little stuff. All that was okay. Then they did a CAT scan on him. And that's when they realized he had fluid on the brain. They were like, we see some fluid on the brain that they like. So that's when they transported him to the big chambers. So that following morning, they did an MRI. And that's when they told us what it was. So it was just that day. No signs, you know what? nothing. I'm gonna say tiredness is a sign. Okay. And we gave you all a, a list as far as who you read the best, but the signs as far as everyday things that you would get for your child. Just like as far as your fever, they may vomit in, and you may think that it may be a virus, but until you get an MRI, you really don't know. You may wow. think that they're clumsy, so their balance is really off. Okay. Um, you may have to look at their eyes and see if their air, eyes are closed. Um, just little things as, as far as and you have to pay attention to your child too, as far as the tiredness, especially if you have a child that's running around all day, and that's what the labor is running around all day. Mm -hmm. Talking about the energetic, the speed all day, and then all of a sudden he's just tired. And what's the whole thing? So, and especially when his balance became harder, that's when he really knows outside the time at the time. Mm -hmm. So, from the moment that you guys found out that this is what was. That's damaging your son. What did you do to take control of it? Like at that moment, like how did you guys, take you know, I guess that's, take that's control it. or just come into like, okay, we need what, to do like, this. what's the next move? Like, how did y'all? So the next move is okay, they do uh, MRI, they mm -hmm. tell you their diagnosis, and um, you have to pick a sort of um, clinical trial. Mm -hmm. um, the doctor give you suggestions as far as the clinical trial that may be um, helpful for your child. Mm -hmm. um, the clinical trials have all types of side effects mm -hmm. um, that we have to um, choose which one. They gave us like a paper full front and back side effects. Wow. Paper full front and back side effects that may occur while, you know, some of these medications. Luckily for him, okay. he didn't really experience any of those side effects. So I was kind of mm -hmm. right. His 12 months going through everything. He really did, he was kind of still, you know, he's still able to do everyday activities. Right. Like, it was the last month. But his first, he lasted 13 months. He lasted 13 months after the diagnosis. Okay. So the first 12 months, he was still kind of normal. Okay. You, know, you would see him and you wouldn't think that he was sick. Other people would say, you don't look sick. Okay. Right. You know, then it was the last month, probably the last three weeks. It's when it, uh, it grew back. The real wind got, you know, you get MRIs pretty often. Mm -hmm. And then in that last MRI, where a player's going back. So then we knew we didn't have too much. We, didn't, we knew we didn't have too much time left. So, you know, you just try to plan out stuff. And his first mega wish, you know, he got diagnosed with, you know, mega wish comedy. We went out to Oklahoma City, he wanted to meet Kerry Knight. So we did that. Then okay. once it grew back, when when we first went out there, he didn't get to see what uh, Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. He was injured at the time. Mm -hmm. So then once it started going back, we figured, okay, we don't got too much time. He didn't get to meet Westbrook. So that's when it's just like, okay, how can we make this happen? So I mean I we 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 was in contact, you know, somebody out there and she was able to set it up, but we just had to get out there. Mm -hmm. So now it's like we just gotta get out there. Mm -hmm. So it's like I put a blast on Facebook, and you know, and, and these people, one of the main reasons why we want to do our foundation because they, they took care of everything. And this is I have to give a shout out to, to Check Six Foundation. Mm -hmm. 
they are um, some of our military service men and women through Air Force where they have groups, they have a foundation where they have too many ill children and basically bring them on base what a blessing. and give them a day, take them around the whole base. You know, I mean, when we went, because the bank did the same thing, mm -hmm. they bought a man, we, we sat on shuttle bomber plane, mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. see, they take them in the pier, we, he went, the jaws of life machine, the, the fire truck, he went up in the thing, but they just take the kids on a day in front. So we came through, once I put that blast up, he inboxed me, he called me, he was like, look here, we're going to take care of your flight, the room, mm -hmm. the rental car, we're going to get them out there and make this happen. Yeah. So they took care of all that, made that happen for us. So that was like a, that was like a big relief. So then, you know, he, he, he went out there, he was able to see him and meet him. And then after that, you know, after we came back from KC, what was he? Yeah. And even with you, I was listening to him when he was telling the story and he said that he didn't experience certain things. And looking at your site, and again, just looking at different researches on my own before from, you know, talking to you guys, it was just saying that some of the um, functions can't see, yes. can't move, so he didn't yes. experience So he, at the end, he did as far as um, the balance. Okay. So the, I'm going to say the last week as far as he had to use the wheelchair. Okay. Um, or he had to cover, um, he had to put a patch over his eye okay. so that he can see um, a little clearer. Okay. So he, at the end stages, that's when it's starting to be in depth. Okay. So, um, so you know, we didn't, well, we didn't want to, I didn't want to see him suffer. Mm -hmm. Now, as the saying goes to each his own, because mm -hmm. we had took him, we wasn't going to do the steroids, but we had took it. But what steroids do, it kind of shrink the pressure. So it can kind of keep them around a little longer. So we had put him back on the steroids. We went out to OKC the second time. Because we wanted him to be normal. We wanted him to enjoy that. So we had put him back on the steroids. But once we came back from OKC, we took him off steroids. Because I didn't, I didn't want him to suffer. We just basically just left it. Left it. Just, just yeah. left it in man. We just left Tell him, tell him, because I didn't want him to blow to some kids, they basically, steroids blows him up. Like he weighed 56 pounds uh, when he got diagnosed. Yeah. Then when he was on the steroids, he, he had moved 78 pounds. And he was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So there was Just like the way he Yeah. Right, because I was also saying that the kids are aware of what's going on. Even though these are body malfunctions that are happening, they are it's aware about it. Happens. Right, so please tune in and ask questions. If you are parents out there or know anyone that's out here that's dealing or know someone that's battling with childhood cancer, these are your people to talk to because they have gone through this. And also and pay understand. attention. Also pay attention because your kid may be experiencing some of these things, and we just thinking that it's all it's just normal, you know, kids growing and stuff. And maybe things that we overlook as far as you know, kids getting tired and you right. know, a little wobbly or whatever. Maybe things that we're overlooking. So these are some of the signs and symptoms that are very important. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video. Make sure that you pay attention because maybe it's something that you can pass on to someone else who's not watching or unavailable at this time. Yes. And Thank you again for right. joining us. And as well as you guys are being educated, we are too. Definitely, Definitely be educated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you guys just like want to put out there? We still have a whole lot of time, but just with us in the first 20, 15, 20 minutes of the conversation that you guys want to share or talk about that we just missed in the first couple of minutes. Just mm -hmm. the experience. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's, I mean who wants uh you want to talk about the reason why we started the foundation? Yeah. Um, the reason why we started the foundation, our foundation name is Walking by Faith with Delay. Mm -hmm. We started the foundation because we know what it's like to have two incomes in the house and having the income sliced in half mm -hmm. and only having one income. We was blessed to have the support system, but everybody doesn't have that support mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have that person that they can go to. And or them or the parents or again their church. We had church support and family support that was able to help us out to have our back. But again, a lot of people don't have that. 
So we want to be there for the community. We want to be there for the families. We know what it's like to um, have worry about bills. Right, exactly. And right. the bill man don't want to hear that your child has cancer. They have a business mm -hmm. to still buy. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear about the mortgages behind right. or the life bill needs to be paid. So that's what we want to do. We want to be able to help the families with their mortgage, help the families with their last wishes of their child. Because again, we know what it's like. We know what it's like. And also, like with funeral expenses, because no one thinks to have life insurance on your child at that age. No one. So, even with that, we was blessed to have three separate foundations help us for a young child. So, with our foundation, we also want to help people going through their funeral expenses. You know, so we just, like, so we just want to help people. We know what it's like. And because he was on my show, and so she that day, April 22nd, she no longer she couldn't work, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I took off for three weeks, but I had to keep working because he was on my show, right. so but she, she no longer worked. Right. So like I said, that cut out, that cut out, I was in coming out right. right then and then the whole time when he was he was ill, she couldn't work because the after diagnosis is six weeks of chemo, mm -hmm. six weeks every day. Six weeks, and then you don't know how you're going to react. It still has right. to be, and it's still here in the doctors all the time because he got to go get blood drawn and keep checking, staying on his platelets count, white, what is it, white cells count, some of this. A lot of stuff that has to be checked often right. to make sure that he's okay. And he's still on clinical trials during this process, so that's still, you know, to see if, see if we can get this. He's going to keep up for the rest of the duration of the last 12 months. Right. He was on chemo, but he did bring that chance to go for um, six weeks at um, NIH. And if you see the faces of what this disease do, it will tear you up the way children transform from. You can see a before picture of a child, and you will see a, a picture and it's just like devastate child. Mm -hmm. What this disease do, and you know, children shouldn't have to go through this because, you know, I get in trouble saying some of the stuff that I want to say, but. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. From just say children are not profitable. It's not enough money into right. helping children, and that's what's doing this. Well, children only receive four percent, and I'm rounding it off for four percent of the national cancer. The, the nation's cancer budget. Children only receive three point seven percent out of it. Out of the, the whole, the, the whole, the nation, the, the nation's the cancer nation. budget, cancer budget, mm -hmm. children. It ain't just no DIPG or one certain cancer. We're talking about all the children's cancers combined only receive 3.7% of the budget. Mm, wow. That's it. I mean, all of them combined have to split up. So have to split up 3.7% of this nation's cancer budget for so, those children. So let me ask you this. With, with that now being put out there, what are some steps that our audience can do? What are some steps that we can take to push that agenda a little bit different. Awareness. Awareness and the most important part, funding. Um, there are some organizations that, that we have became famous with, like um, the Michael Mosher Foundation. They are very good as far as with the research. Um, you can go look for them. I can give you the I give you the information. Yes. Um, and they, and they, they are phenomenal as far as with the research. If you want to help families out, you want to donate to our foundation. Because, the, again, our families need help. Research is, is phenomenal. But right here in our community, right here in the states, and I'm about to get emotional, I'm sorry. We, 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 need, we need funding for our kids. Our parents shouldn't have to worry. Our parents should have to worry about their child catching cancer free, but once they catch the cancer. I mean, and actually, we, 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 we are plugged in the children's hospital. Mm -hmm. But going through what we're going through, they told us. We was by far the strongest family that we that with. Mm -hmm. And so they like they were we we are plugged in. We are going up there in May. May is spring cancer awareness month. Right. So we are going there in May. Okay. Basically on mother I think it might be Mother's Day. We wanna help the mothers that are there because mm -hmm. they spend the majority of their days in the hospital with their child. So we wanna be able to bless them mm -hmm. with you know, with something. But we go up there, you know, and just you know, just, just try to put some joy in the kids' lives for a day. One time, a couple of years ago, we went up there, we took a, 
we'll, we'll see what's there. Yeah, we took, we had document stuff in. Papa come up there, had some pain, let the kids pain, they enjoy that, you know, talk to them and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and it was us, along with my brother with a Boys to Bowtie mentorship program. He had joined in with us. And we went up there, you know, for a day to bring some excitement in the kids' lives. Because we know what these parents go through, we know what these kids go through. So we want to do that again this May to go back up there. And, you know, we. We also we, we talk to social work to try to get to it, get information. Right. You know, for right. who may need some help. Right. right. And like everybody don't want all their information out. There. Right. So, but she was the one who was helping us to where she would talk to us. Okay, you know, if we needed something, we can talk to her, and she would reach out to foundations. You know, they need cell phone. Give me cell phone bill. Mm -hmm. like we need a cell phone mm -hmm. bill paid one time. Right. So she had a foundation to help us with that. It could be something like that to where we want to be one of those foundations where she knows she can call. Mm -hmm. You know, like that family going through something where she can call us, this family need this. I mean, check six and we met them, they paid two months of our mortgage. Wow. Oh, that's wow. awesome. And what you were saying about the income, like the one income at a pound, you can get a call that your child is running a fever in school. And we like, oh, we got to leave work in a heartbeat. You know, you got to let your boss know. I got to leave early. I got to pick my child up. They vomiting. They sick. And that's just like on a small scale. A small scale. You know what I'm saying? They went to school fine. Next thing you know, you get in a call. Maybe it's something that they ate. So, and that's just that one day. You have parents to be like, oh, my goodness, I might be fired. Or I'm going to be short paid <laughs> just for this one day. But I might can make it up. With hours, go to work early the next day, stay late the next day. So you, it was, it's no time for that because you want to be there for your child no matter, no matter what. Right. I know I have moments when I say I don't leave work, my child is sick, nobody else to pick him up, fight. And that was just <laughs> on the one thing. You not just that one time the school call. Yeah. So it's like. You're telling me that my child is sick, that I have to be there Turn literally it, yeah. like 24 hours. First of all, we there for our kids 24 hours regardless. But it's different. But when they are hurting, we there them. like every minute. It, every it's not 24 hours, it's every minute, every second. So let me ask you something. That we're there. For, for parents that have maybe have just received that information. Um, their child is diagnosed with a child with brain cancer. What would you suggest the first steps be? First step? Research. I mean, research, but I would say first and foremost, be strong for the child. Real quick, Louis, be before you go on with that, we got a few comments that people would like to um, say. We have Tony Gonzalez, thanks for the topic. I learned something new about the disease. Um, Michael Tyler said, hey ladies, just showing some, some, some support, keep up the good work. Tamika Douglas said, good stuff, please tell them thank you for sharing your story. Yes. Tamika Green said, hi fam, well done. Nicole Turner said, bless you all for sharing your story. Julia Diggs said, yo, yo. <laughs> Scott said, my favorite family. Um, he also said, hashtag do it for Bea. Akisha said, may God bless your family. Hey, ladies, great topic. Joseph Littleton said, yes, because yes, cause please enlighten them so they can teach others about the type of cancer. Hashtag do it for Bea. Yeah, Scott, when he posted in football, when he played football. Mm -hmm. So, he, you know, he was he was in tune with how active the Bay was right. before, before all of this. But it's... Like I said, it's just a point of uh, being strong. When you when we when you get the message, you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong because the child feels what you feel. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. where do you pull that strength? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, because if he see us crying and, and worrying, he's going to think something. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, when he around you, be strong. If you want to break down, just do it when he sleeps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or do it when you're away from him. 
but just know that you have to be strong. You have to be strong and just try to make, you know, make sure that whatever time you have left, make okay. the most of it. Yeah. Make the most of it. You know, you, 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 you don't know. So try to be normal as you can. Like, don't try to treat them any different. We didn't, you know, still expectations because they're not worse. Like, one day, we was in, I mean, we, we educated in the Bay on what he had. We educated him on what he had and what may happen next day. And uh, so, one day, we was, we was in a car, sitting at a light, and uh, it was kind of quiet in the truck, which is me and him. So, he said, Dang, I said, what's up, man? I don't want to die. So I paused for a second. You know, that thing about it is, you know, so I'm just like, man, you're not going to die. You know, you're going to be all right. But in, my, in the back of my mind, you know, you know what the end, what the end inevitable could be so right. but I had to be strong. Like mm -hmm. if I was just sitting there and busted out crying and then he would have right. known that that something was wrong. But right. he, I mean he had dreams. Right. He had a dream. Like he put like if you go on our uh, Facebook page, Welcome by Faith in the Bay, we found a video after he passed on right on his grandma. I've seen that. Seen that video. <laughs> he was singing like, the song. Like, <laughs> yeah, like a four minute video we found uh -huh. out after. So mm -hmm. like I, you know he left us some stuff to where he said he wanted to be this. And that's just the type of kid he was. Right. That's just the type of kid he was. He was, you know, he, he would have been somebody's, you know, somebody's special. Like what he shared with Lou, and it's amazing, our amazing child. Um, he didn't let me see that. And I just wanted to know what was going on with him. Right. And I just wanted to know yeah, okay, that's 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 the most amazing word that a child can always ask. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> right, and it's my turn. And I get on my nerves because he asks me that all the time. Right. <laughs> the next mom, you okay? We're half or more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Move the son about me, your family, then you know, then he said, and we discussed as far as we we shared everything with his diagnosis. As far as um, some parents being the way, okay, you want to be cremated, you want to be buried, you want to be buried, what do you mean? In the ground? Yeah, in the ground. Well, so, what's the cremation? So, we explained it mm -hmm. to a nine year old. Mm -hmm. So, did we say eight years old? He was diagnosed at eight. He got diagnosed at eight years old. Okay. He passed at nine. I don't think we just stayed his age. Right. He was diagnosed so at eight. Yeah, he was okay. diagnosed at eight and he passed away at nine. So he, he left behind. He's talking about an amazing child. Touch plenty of people. Touch plenty of people. As far as, okay, so I'm going to bring balloons to be released at my funeral. I'm going to be cremated. And it was like, yeah, that was his happy day. Like, yeah. Yeah, you got it. And then after um, we follow those wishes out, just go to checklist. <laughs> um, like a week later, the hospital nurse came and he left force recordings for us, the places inside of the bed. Mm -hmm. And oh, it was, yeah, our, our old child, yeah, our old spirit child was still thinking. When he, he left on the voice recording, I will always be watching like that. He always say, um, have a good day to his father. And he left that on the voice recording. He always liked to say his prayers. He left that on the voice recording. And it's amazing that a nine-year-old child can to have all of these things that a nine-year-old shouldn't be thinking about. Anybody. Right, 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 right. right. To, to, to have this, there's no way that we can stop doing this foundation. Right. Mm -hmm. And the people who are going, you know, going, going through this, and, and uh, it was so much. Uh, 
also was it was it's a lot that you have to, that you want to get out and you want to share. So even with sharing with Nevay his um, diagnosis and everything, and hearing what you were saying about he what he wanted, he was planning pretty much everything that he wanted. Did he show any signs of like being scared? Not well, I guess you, yeah. when you said he made the comment that he did not want to die. So I guess that would have been the first sign of showing like I'm scared. Yeah, because there right. was a we had a um a book. Um what do you do when you go down? When you it was called It's Heaven for Real. Mm -hmm. And we was reading a book and I was reading to him and he was saying, So when I die, I don't have no bad time. And you think I'm like, I'm going to share that mindset of childlike mindset. Yeah. When we when we went out here, so most people that were in my class, I gave the one who wanted to play all the time. So, again, what he shared with my husband was totally different than what he protested. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. And then people ask like, "How do y'all do it?" I just tell people. And that was one. Of, that's what I was. I was ask. getting to that too. I just tell people when he was going through chemo, he he never complained. He about He was taking at one point he was taking twenty three, twenty four pills a day. Never complained. So I tell people I watched my son battle this. Never complained. So why should I why should I worry when I need it? Right. You know, man, how do you man, how do you do this day? How do you do I mean, I mean what am I supposed to do? Sit around and be depressed. You know, just keep his name alive. Mm -hmm. I need to keep his name alive. Keep him in everything we do. Mm -hmm. And and just keep his wish because in this video as people see, he had mentioned McDonald's, but he had met Wendy's. <laughs> with the, um, you know, with the, with the Frosty, and, uh, and they right. give it to charity. Right. Yeah, he had mentioned McDonald's, but he had met Wendy's. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah, he wanted to go to the Wendy's. Yeah, we got to <laughs> donate to the church. It's just giving, it, just to give back. So in his honor, that's just what we want to do, where we want to, you know, just, we want to we help people who go on through, we know what they want to so even you know, our businesses, he, he knew about donation, he knew about giving, and his heart was always big. Every Christmas time, okay, we're going to give your toys away mm -hmm. to, to somebody that, that's, that's fortunate, and then yeah. you're you going to always give me toys. So he, he pulling out toys, you know, looking at the toys, like, you play that toy one time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, his heart was all, always, always big, always big. And I, I guess the, the part that I'm just in disbelief about, and I guess this comes with certain sicknesses, that is no signs. You tried to eat the day before? Like no signs. Take the day before. He was playing with his dog, brother, sister. Xbox. Xbox Live. And I just took him to the movie. The video, yeah, you know, the video where they up playing, he up moving. The day before. So I, I would have never thought that. You know, we only got one more day with Right, right. Planned the day before. So then, you know, the next morning, just wake up to the moon. So we kind of went. He didn't say he was losing his bodily functions. He couldn't control himself. He was on himself. Couldn't get up. So, you know, we had to get him up, clean him up, give him a bath, clothe him. Couldn't really talk. Yeah, but man, when we was talking to him in his bed, he couldn't really, couldn't really talk. So mm -hmm. that's when I started talking to him as far as okay, we got your building bed. Mm -hmm. What outfit do you want on the first? We had three outfits. We had okay, see so outfit, mm -hmm. red skin outfit, and a military outfit. Mm -hmm. And the military outfit was for check six because no, Rob ain't giving us wings yet. He gave me the wings at the, the restaurant. But he had three outfits, so I was talking to him. Which outfit you want on first? Which okay? Which outfit you want? You know, on your first, and 
just talk with him. I mean, he couldn't really answer. The answer was kind of slurred, mm -hmm. but he couldn't really answer. He was kind of breathing for him. So we knew that, you know, it was, it was, it was time. And then he had a slight of coming. Who would have never thought the day before that? Yeah. That this day was coming. Who would have never thought? Mm -hmm. So this was like in the morning, and he ended up, he was pronounced at 317. Mm -hmm. So it was at home. And um, so we heard him take his last breath. Mm -hmm. We were standing over him, talking to him, telling him it's okay. Mm -hmm. We all right. It's okay. But we heard him take his last breath. And I just didn't want to see him suffer. That's why right. I didn't use right. steroids. I didn't want to see him with tubes in right. his nose, mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. Because I could have held on right. with steroids right. and stuff, but I couldn't see him. I, I, no. It wasn't him. If he can't be him, right. then, you know, just, I just, like the man above, tell you when he's ready to bring you, and we're going to continue on with your mission. Wow. I I don't know. I mean, you know, I understand what you're saying, where you got your strength from above, but even to tell the story, I don't know where you got that strength from either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. I, and I understand why you're doing it, you know, and I, I appreciate you for doing it because I would have never been aware Mm -hmm. of it is. I seen um, an adult dying of brain cancer. And it was like the worst thing you ever want to see. You know, you think cancer is bad, but when you see somebody that just can't control nothing, not even a twitch, not nothing. So mm -hmm. to me, that was bad, but I can't imagine watching my kid go through that. And then, you know, mustering up enough strength to just power through. So my hat is off to you. I love Ooh, Lord, I'm saying, people don't know. He said people don't know. We, you know, it's about spreading awareness. Awareness yeah. is key, yeah. but a lot of people don't know. And at some point, like everybody know what the month of October is, yeah. but everybody don't know what September is. September yeah. is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Right. So we just trying to put that out there. The color is gold. The color is gold. <laughs> September is Childhood right. Cancer Awareness Month. The color is gold. We just start to get more recognition. You know, with NASCAR went gold, some baseball organizations went gold, and some buildings be going gold. It's starting to pick up a little, but nowhere near it should be. Yeah, I've but never not seen only with awareness, some pressure has to be put on that government because I'm pretty sure every parent was sacrificed, every grandparent was sacrificed their life for their grandchild. Right. So why are babies only getting 3.7% of this nation's cancer budget? That has to be changed. And that's the data come with awareness. That come with awareness. A lot of organizations, you know, who like I said, we have a community, unfortunately, through this through this disease. And and they say the blessing for us and what we're doing because we all have a family directly. Where a lot of them are, are raising for a cure. So they can't do what we do. Mm -hmm. So where they can't they are raising their money for a cure. But the family come to them, they need help, they can't donate to that family because of what they're Foundation stands for. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said. Well, we, you know, the fact that we are helping families directly so we can do that. And that's what we want to do because we we went through it and we know what some of these people are going through. Absolutely. And, and the fact that children is just here in our backyard. And I can tell y'all, it's, it's families in our backyard that are going through it and living it. But I mean, we can't help them without y'all. Right. And that's spirit. You know. I mean, the Saint Jude's. Yeah, yes. yeah, nothing Jude. against they are wonderful, but they yes. get NBA money. And you know what? Just from you saying that, like I said, not to be talking about any, when I was telling my sister the show that we was going to have tonight, and when I said about childhood cancer, they want to just, you know, spread awareness, and the um, budget is real low. And that was exactly what she, and that was what she said. She was just like, well, what about Saint Jude? But just because you're not. She wasn't educated, which we're not either, but that's all we kind of hear when it comes to the child. The child. She right. said exactly so for that. What, but what happens when you give a hundred dollars to knock the down, knock down the same tree? Yes, right, right. Um, right. When you get a hundred, you give me a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. By the time they get the menstrual fees mm -hmm. and this fee and that fee, mm -hmm. they probably get a dollar or two dollars. Mm -hmm. So you got to really think about and do your research and 
nonprofits, big organizations, we need to give money to. You gotta do the research. Right. Yes, they do. So they get corporate money. They get corporate money. They get. They get money. They are engaging. That money ain't gonna stop. Right. I don't have another uh, foundation who's also yeah. dealing with cancer, children's cancer. To a that that hundred five hundred dollars giving us okay. that could pay somebody that could be a bill for somebody right. that can really help to what we can do mm-hmm. you know so it's just uh, we just just trying to educate it's, it's, it's you know, we all in the same fight but we are trying to help people directly it could be funeral experience somebody could lose their child yeah no way or well, somebody mentioned they should have had health insurance for their child but what about the parent that now they can't afford it. So now they go to work. Because they can't go to work and now they can't pay their insurance bill. So Oh yeah, that's right. Or oh, your insurance is Doesn't is half of your check. But you still gotta live. And they say, okay, well, I'm I might have covered all the A, B, and C. So mm-hmm. you can get assistance. You can get free medication. Right. Well guess what? And the baby denied three times before he was approved at the end. And that was just for the health insurance. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a process. It's paperwork. Paperwork that and another stress that's put in. Yeah. As mm-hmm. a parent. That's the paperwork that you have to do. So yeah, you do whatever you have to do for your child. But should you have to do that? Hey, look, people diagnose at eight. Diagnose at eight. And they finally like, medicate yourself. Medicaid, Medicaid and he finally got accepted in September. So I was able to come off the road. But I was over the road truck. So of course after he got sick, mm-hmm. I was home for three weeks. Mm-hmm. But then daddy gotta go back to work. Keep this his shorts up. Right. So, you know, go back. Then finally in September. So you're talking from April to September. Before that, Medicaid, they finally accepted it and they kicked in twelve every to come home and get a local job. Mm-hmm. To be home every day. But you know, some people don't have that. They, yeah. they may not have that the, that choice or that obstacle or somebody else. Or what about like, a you know, single mother? Yeah, single mother. Right. That might gotta move back home with family members or just give up their mm-hmm. whole yeah. life. But even that, when you got that illness, their 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 immune system now is extremely weak, mm-hmm. so they can't be around. They can't be around nothing. Okay. That yeah. that immune system is really weak. Like, Eventually, he was able to, to go back to school. He wanted to go back to school. Okay. So the following school year, he went back to school. But if a child was sick in that class, he couldn't be in it. Mm-hmm. Couldn't be in it. Okay. His immune system is extremely weak. So it's just, you know, you can't have too many people in the house because he would easily get sick. And you can't have that. Anything yeah. that affect that, that affect his platelet counts, like all that type of stuff, you know, even with their diet once they get sick. Like I, said, I was just about to say that, the eating. So how was the eating? Okay, yeah, he was fine with eating until the end. Okay. Um, he wasn't eating as much. Mm-hmm. But the steroids, of course, mm-hmm. in the beginning with the first um, session of chemo and um, the radiation when he first got down there, yeah, he ate everything. Mm-hmm. When I say everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he went from 656 pounds to 78. Right, right. So he, but at the end, he wasn't he didn't really have appetite. So now you're talking about, okay, so since he's not eating, so now you got to go to store to insurers. Yeah. Make sure he yeah. has the right enough protein. Mm-hmm. Or we have to do this. And we can get on a whole other subject as well as the diet. Right. Yeah, put to the child on Oxycontin. Right. Right. Use on Oxycontin. Right. Let's go to picture how can you give their child. Morphine, mm-hmm. just the coat, just the coat. Yeah. Morphine, that's how I go. And what is, what the IPT do? Let me tell you how they take out babies from us. What it is, it, it swells up. Your brain swells up to a point eventually that fluid has nowhere to go but down. So once that fluid no longer it swells up, it comes down, it trickles into your, your areas. So basically, your child suffocates to death. That fluid will come down into it and then it suffocates. Yeah. So basically, suffocates you. So the reason for not yeah, the way having the true shape headaches 
It's, it's on the brainstem. It's, 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 no it's on the brainstem. And that brainstem was, was what controlled the movement by the bone. That 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 tumor is right on the brainstem. So it's an opera. So as of today, from what you guys know, every child that's been diagnosed with that has pretty much lost Some less, some I think it's it maybe it's it's a couple. That's why they say ninety seven percent. It's a couple. In 97 to 18 months. I see it's a little girl who diagnosed in 2011. She's still going, but I just seen today the tumors on her spine are so bad. There's basically not too much more they can do for her. So they want her, not only in her brain, they want her spine too. So you can't think about it. Mm. Okay, say for instance, this is what we think about it. Um, you have cancer. And your cancer in, is in remission. Sometimes the cancer will come back and not come back in the same place. Right, right, right. It'll come back in a little different area. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what you can experience. It's, 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 it's a lot of babies all over the world going through the same rate. But just childhood cancer, not even DIP, childhood cancer, period. 46 kids are diagnosed every day, seven children die every day from childhood cancer. So is that right? So tell me. Number one is the leading cause. Yeah. Brain cancer, number one cause of death combined. Everything else you combine, brain cancer, number one cause of children. Death. So are you talking about children, period, or children, black children? No, children, children, period. Children, period. Right. Children, period. Right. Wow. That's the number one cause. Mm -hmm. And you know, cancer don't have no cause. Correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's facts on this. On this, we're gonna be walking around with this, this, this thing. Yeah, you know, these papers here. Right. You know, look, DIPG leaves kids mentally intact, but still essential bodily functions over time as the tumor grows. With his vision, chewing, swallowing, walking, and breathing. I mean, that's what it does. Hmm. Some, some, some kids, six months in, they in a wheelchair. Like I said, the baby was luckily to where his. 12 months, she's still walking around in the plane. Yeah. It's just that last month, the last three weeks, mm -hmm. is when we started to really affect the taking away we couldn't really run. But other than that, he was, I mean, he was himself. He was like this. Yeah. You know, he looks, he looks sick. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, it looks like he's sick. You never know what's going on with somebody. Right. You never know what's going on right. with somebody. Wow. You know. Make sure y'all Google this, DIPG. Make sure you find out some more information and do some more research because these babies need your help. Just childhood cancer, period. You know what I'm saying? Because it's definitely something, like you see a St. Jude's commercial, Ronald mm -hmm. McDonald House, mm -hmm. all that. You see those commercials, but they also give you give it to you on a basic general level, too. Like that Ronald McDonald's house. What is, what's the radius for that? Everybody can't go there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what is with that? I think it's 25 miles or something. Wow. I have it. I never knew that. I thought it was anybody that was sent there was welcome to stay at Arlington John House, depending on how, how severe the cancer it's, 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 was for the it's, children. No, it's, it's, it's politics. Right. It's, you know, it's, it ain't just, okay, you tell me you go here. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's there. You know, I remember when we last time we went up children's, you know, it was a, a mother that was like, I don't think it was DIPG. She was by the way, it was cancer. I mean, at least some people homeless lose their home, single mother. Yeah. I can two see that. Children, two children can't work in a hospital day with your child, and you can't work and you lose your home. So, and then it's like my end goal. If, you know, my end, my long term vision is to be able to have houses set up for families, you know, to even you know, you know, healthy food in the house, just shelter for you not to have to work mm -hmm. while you're battling this. And, I mean, whatever we can get, rather rooms, maybe somebody hear it and want to invest. I don't need money. Just somebody realize that this is serious, this is real. Some has to be done, you know, to help people going through through this. Like if we lived in the rich, we lived to commute to jobs. Some people coming from 
of people. Some, some, some families have flown in from Africa. You know, what are they going to stay? You know, so like, we you know, so we, we have that connect because we went through it. Right. So children, uh, you know, the doctor, the main doctor there, social worker there, they spoke at our son. Mm. So they like family with us. We're still in contact with them. So we get this information. We know what's going on. So we just trying to, you know, pass it out to the public and hope y'all take this and realize that this is real. Google yes, information. Yes, yes. Google information. And like this is, you know, some of y'all, some of y'all seen it, some might not, but some of y'all seen that little girl that Kevin Hart went and seen in Philadelphia. She's also battling the IPG. What little girl? I don't know, it was Princess Naya. Because I want to say maybe I did see that. Yeah, maybe yeah, on yeah. Instagram or something. Yeah, they on Instagram. Okay. Princess Naya. So what is, your, what is your contact? Contact information. Anybody want to get in contact? Upcoming events. Everything. Okay, I can do the upcoming event. <laughs> um, the first upcoming event that will happen is um, at Chuck E. Cheese. Um, it's a fundraiser. Bring your kids out. It's Easter break, spring break. So it's a Friday night. Have a family night with your child. And a percentage of that donation is donated to the Walk of Our Faith. So it doesn't matter if you say, okay, I don't have kids. Come and get a pizza. Get <laughs> Everybody drink. loves pizza. All of us. You just pizza. come through and leave a donation. Right, right. You ain't necessarily have to stay. If you just want to come, maybe come up to us and, and leave a donation for us. You know, that's okay because at the end, we, we, we can't do nothing for people without the public self. No foundation right. can function without the public self. Right. But that's the first one. Uh, what's the date? April 6th. That's April 6th. April 6th. And we'll get it from the Yeah. It's on our foundation website. Mm -hmm. um, you can, um, our website, you can put do it for they, do it, D O I T, the number four, B A E H dot org. Mm -hmm. You can go on there. Um, you can go under events. It's under the event. We'll be here from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. And our hashtag, do it for they, is our hashtag, what we use and everything we do. But that's what we're doing this for. You can Google Do It For Bay and, you know, his Facebook page and a lot of stuff will come up. You can put his name in a group of search in Bay Littleton. And even that Check 6 event will come up. Mm -hmm. That was shared even when he first met Kevin Durant. That video will come up, you know, in his heaven backwards. Any V A E H. I know, when I say that, I was like, yeah. You know, you can Google that. But Facebook is welcome by Facebook in the Bay. That's our Facebook page where we, 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 you know, we keep everybody up to date. Mm -hmm. Our website, which is our foundation website, is welcome by Facebook in the Bay dot org. And uh, Instagram is do it, do it for Bay. Instagram is do it for Bay. So, we, you know, we keep everybody posted. And Twitter is do it for Bay as well. And you can also, like that Facebook page is what we started first. So. You go on the Facebook page, please like it, share it, and just go go through, watch. We, we, this started back in 2013, mm -hmm. and we kept everybody, you know, that's basically our journal, mm -hmm. pictures and stuff of, of what was going on. So, you can see him talking, you can see him playing, you can see everything that he was doing, you can become a part. His last, his last, his last birthday was physically here. You know, some video was up on that. So it's uh and every year we still try to celebrate his birthday. Yeah, um yeah. this past year we went to um what's the name of it? Rod Real. Rod Real. Rod Real. Rod, Rod, Rod Real for his birthday and um every year and last year we launched his foundation yeah. on his birthday. Okay. That's awesome. Ooh, that is awesome. Yeah, so he would have been thirteen. So he's forever nine, but this year. He's 13. Mm -hmm. He's a teenager. Yeah. We have two comments. T shirt, new attitude. Littleton said, Do it for Bay. Walking hashtag, walking my faith with the Bay. Miss my nephew, keep spreading awareness. And we have Nikki Addison said, Mommy and Daddy are spreading awareness, awareness just like they promised you, Bay. You are missed and loved. And thank you for everyone. Thank we you have Tamika Green that yes. said, thank you ladies for helping 
spreading awareness about this terrible disease. Yes, thank you all for tuning in. Sorry we really, you know, we didn't get a chance to interact and, you know, do certain things you usually do with our audience because it's such a serious topic. And I know everybody is probably sitting like we are in awe and in tears and like, mm-hmm. oh my God, you know, whatever we can do to help anything you have, that any event that you have that you know you want to get out and just let us know. We are more than open to help and support the cause and the foundation. You know, and we thank you again for joining us. This is a very deep topic. I'm a crybaby. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> it didn't come out of nowhere because I've been going through it all day. Because I've been really like, okay, you can help them. She was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so thank you all for joining us tonight. And again, um, the, the Facebook information, can you post that to in the yes. comments so yes. people can get to that? Um, thank you all for tuning in tonight. And we will even upload, for anybody that started out late, we definitely will upload it so they can repeat it. And yes. Share it with you guys. Yep, so you guys can view this anytime. It'll be on our Facebook uh, page, Jetsons Radio DC, also our JT Ladies Lounge on page. Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you can also contact us on our individual pages. It will also be uploaded to our YouTube page. All that good stuff, JT Ladies Lounge, Justin's Radio DC. So make sure you tune in Wednesday. We will be back. Make sure you guys research DP, DIP. We have these shirts. If you want to support, walk around support, we have these shirts. Just hit us up. I'll meet you on the Bobelli area. Yeah. You know, if you, you know, for the foundation, $20 for the foundation. This is our, this is our dose of faith. That people ask you where people ask you what it means, you know, send just, them to the just website. send them to the website, tell them Google it, right. Google Dose of Faith, right. and the information will come up. This is basically spread awareness. Our baby, we are the voice for these babies. Yes. They I can't agree. speak. We as adults are their voices, and it's time for us to do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, I agree. Thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you all. All right, you all have a great night. Google it. Do it for Bay. Hashtag do it for Bay. Good night. Good night.